and what this means is that China may be growing at a slower rate, but it is now a much bigger share of the global economy. And so its contribution to the global economy is still going to be significant. And if Chinese reforms spur even more growth in China, then that will have mostly positive spillover effects to the rest of the world as well. And if China is successful with that, it will do well for itself and will also help the world. And what this means is that China may be growing at a slower rate, but it is now a much bigger share of the global economy. And so its contribution to the global economy is still going to be significant. And, its con and the tr contribution of Chinese growth to global growth will still be a high proportion. And so that is the central forecast. That's what you expect to see happening, is that a continuation of the, the, the trend that we've been seeing. And so what we're looking at at the moment is an environment where we have to be worried about the state of global growth generally. But Chinese growth, Chinese growth, I tend to be a little bit more optimistic. If you take a look at uh, the growth we've had for the last 20 years, China has been very important for the global growth, both because of its own very rapid growth and then directly by its contribution to but other countries have benefited from that growth, for example, developing countries. To put it in some numbers, uh, even the bigger time period between 1980 and 2015, China's share of global GDP went from 2% to 17%. That is the biggest increase in the shortest time of any country in the world. So that's part of why global growth was so high. To the extent that China is successful on implementing reforms, and can keep its growth rate high, six and a half or more, as the president has said, it will still contribute very much to global growth. And the sources of growth for China are going to have to be much more in terms of uh, innovation, uh, innovation across the whole economy, agriculture, services, manufacturing. And if China is successful with that, it will do well for itself and will also help the world. China's reforms will be hugely important, not just for China, especially for China, but for the rest of the world. Uh, China for some years has been the driver of global growth. Uh, it is the biggest country, obviously, in, in every metric imaginable. And so if Chinese reforms spur even more growth in China, then that will have mostly positive spillover effects to the rest of the world as well. China's growth has been very important uh, for global uh, economic growth uh, increasingly in the last, let's say, two decades. Um, China has grown from uh, having about 2% of global GDP of uh, having 17, 80% of global GDP. So any uh, percentage of growth in China is contributing to global growth. But still, the structural change in China, uh, which also means, for example, relocation of uh, lower value-added industries to other countries, will influence um, the uh, regional economy, the global economy, by Chinese investments, by Chinese capital Im uh, exports. China is still a capital export, uh, exporting country and will, will remain so uh, for the foreseeable future. And this will influence the global economy. So it's not only the, the volume of growth uh, which, is, uh, uh, which is important, it's also the question of the, um, uh, the structural change in China uh, and its impact on particularly on the region. China is trying to aim for a new normal, as China has already officially stated, uh, which means that it wants to bring, it wants to bring more quality in its economic growth rather than just a number. And maybe even shift from just being an export-oriented economy more towards a consumption-led economy. What that would mean is that the, uh, it will, the global, the value chain and the manufacturing and the industry within China is going to change. It will also require that, uh, uh, that there is more value-added industry, maybe even some services-related industries that, uh, that are being hosted now in China. So if you shift towards a consumption, if China shifts towards a consumption-led 
economy and a services led economy it will require a different framework to engage with the world uh, we need a different kind of agreement not just a free trade agreement and goods we need free trade agreement and services movement of professionals uh, more uh, ability for other countries to set up offices here uh, and for to bring in people and for move, moving capital and money and so there is there is many touch points that china's shift will have with the rest of the world